All right, it's time to settle this. Is tokenal really just white glue? Today we find out. So even before I started leatherworking, back when I was just kind of lurking on the Leathercraft subreddit or watching videos on YouTube or checking out pictures on Instagram, a common question that would pop up is, is tokenal really just Elmer's white glue? And obviously a lot of the time this was just a joke, not really a legitimate question, but there was always that feeling of curiosity there, like maybe it is? So today we're finally gonna get to the bottom of this and who knows, maybe after this, we're all gonna be buying $2 bottles of white glue to replace our tokenal. So starting this off, let's look at tokenal. The jar is covered in Japanese and kind of hard to figure out what it says. But this stuff looks like glue and according to their website, tokenal has a glue component that goes deep into the fiber and a wax component that coats the surface. So we know that tokenal does contain glue. Now, the real question is, is there enough other stuff that's gonna make this significantly different from just glue? I was able to find a material safety data sheet for tokenal, which actually lists their ingredients. And there's nothing crazy in there, a few pretty normal chemicals, just natural paste, resin, pigment wax, and silicone. And I'll leave a link to where I found that down in the description as well. But since the first ingredient is paste and the last ingredient's wax, we know that tokenal is mostly glue. Not looking good for you, tokenal. All right, let's take a look at the Challenger and it's good old classic, Elmer's white glue, the same stuff you used in school. I'd imagine everyone's pretty familiar with Elmer's white glue. This stuff was the gold standard for kids in Canada and the US to make crappy art projects for their parents at school. So what's in white glue? Maybe it also contains the same resin, pigment, wax, and silicone that Tokenal does. Lucky for you, I found the data sheet for Elmer's white glue online as well, and it actually only has one ingredient, non-hazardous substance. I'm serious, that's what it says online. I'll uh, link their data sheet as well. And yeah, that's not entirely helpful, but honestly, that's the best I could find. It seems that they want to keep their extremely popular products ingredients secret for some reason. Weird, I know. So basically, this is a non-toxic glue, and this contains a non-toxic glue and a few other things. I hate to say it, but I feel like these two are more similar than we've realized. I think it's time to put these to the test. They sound like the same thing, to be honest. But these are two pieces of the same piece of natural veg tan. It's too thick that I've glued together. I've already prepared the edges. What I did is beveled them. I went through all my grits of sandpaper down to 3000 grit. I've not applied any product to these. What I'm going to do is uh, burnish these with a little bit of water first, and then one of them will get the tokenol treatment. One of them will get the glue treatment. And I'm actually just going to right on them, just so we know. We'll do Elmer's on one, and Tokenol on the other. And then, there's no mistaking, once we get going, which one's which. Let's get into it. So we'll start with the Tokenol and do my twice burnished method. I'm not using my Tokenol pen here just because I wanna apply these in the same way. So I'll just start with a bit of water and then shape the edge. Now I'll do the first burnish using my machine. Once it comes off there, I'm just going to re-sand it down using 800 and then 1000 grit. And finally, I'll reapply tokenal and burnish it with the canvas cloth and it turns out extra crispy just like it always does. Now it's Elmer's turn. You nervous yet, tokenal? Same process here, only this time we're using the glue. Start with the water. Burnish one on the machine. Sand with 800 and then 1000, then reapply the glue and burnish with canvas. And let's see what we got. All right, so there it is. There's burnishing with Elmer's glue. Did I notice a difference? Yeah, I noticed a difference. The Elmer's glue feels 
like glue. It's a lot stickier. Uh, you can see it like stringing, leaving a trail as you dot it with your finger. Whereas Tokenol is a little bit thinner, um, probably has, I don't know, some other liquids in there. Uh, it uh, doesn't feel like glue in your fingers and just burnishing Tokenol feels way better. It gave a better result than the Elmer's did. So here's the Tokenol, nice crispy edge. And here's the Elmer's. Not a bad edge for what it is, but definitely not as uh, nice as the Tokenol. So the real question is, can you burnish with Elmer's glue? I would say, yeah, you can. It's uh, not bad. Should you switch to Elmer's glue for burnishing? I would say probably not. If you have access to Tokenol, it's the way to go. I would stick with this. The edge is nicer and it was easier to work with. Uh, one of the issues with this is because it's tackier, because it's glue, it uh, was snagging on this as I used it. Uh, if you don't use a canvas and, and maybe you were using your wood slicker for all of your burnishing, then maybe it would be a little bit easier. But I found it a little bit difficult with this. So there we go. One of Leathercraft's biggest mysteries, Tokenol is not just white glue. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye. Hey, if you guys are just getting into Leathercraft, wanna check out some of my other videos, I got a good playlist for beginners right here. And also if you need help burnishing, I got a good uh, burnishing tutorial right here.